Let's do one more example to show you some of the things that might happen when going through the solving process. Uh, this one is 3 times the absolute value of x plus 2 uh, plus 3 is equal to 0. So we'll start off by trying to isolate that absolute value. I'm going to subtract a 3 from both sides. Uh, now to get rid of that 3 out in front of the absolute value, let's divide both sides by 3. So I have the absolute value of x plus 2. Now following our steps, we would split this into two problems. Here we have the problem exactly the same, just no absolute value bars. And over here, negative x plus 2 is equal to negative 1. All right, now let's solve each of them separately. I will subtract a 2 from both sides, giving me x is equal to a negative 3. Uh, on the other side here, I will go ahead and distribute through with my negative sign. Then I will add 2 to both sides. And lastly, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by a negative 1. So I have two possible solutions, x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1. Of course, let's check them, see how they turn out. Okay, let's see, uh, negative 3 plus 2 would be a negative 1. When we take the absolute value of negative 1, we get a positive 1. So what I'm getting here is that uh, 3 times 1 is 3, and when I add another 3, I get 6. Well, this shows that this one does not work out. So I'm going to get rid of that. It is not a solution. All right, let's try it on the other side. And we'll put in a negative 1. Okay, so I have 3. Negative 1 plus 2 is a positive 1. All right, and the absolute value of positive 1 is 1. So I have 3 times 1 plus 3. I think that's the same situation as before, or 6 is equal to 0. So that doesn't work out as well. So I have to throw away that solution. Well, what this shows is that if none of them work, then we actually have no solution. Now, this highlights that it is a good idea to always check your answers. And it also highlights that some funny things could happen when working with absolute values. Remember that an absolute value takes uh, whatever you put into it, and it makes it positive. In fact, we can really see a problem in this step uh, when we are working. I have that the absolute value of something is equal to a negative. And that can't happen. Because again, our absolute value on one side will be positive. And on the other side, we're setting it equal to a negative. And we cannot get a positive and a negative to agree. So that's why this one also has no solution. If you can catch it early on, uh, usually you can save yourself a lot of work, but if you don't, make sure you are checking your solutions uh, so that you can definitely find these no solution problems. All right. Thank you for watching educator.com.